we're going to continue to work with this animation that we have of this ball bouncing and what we're going to do is we're going to convert the ball into another object as it comes second bounce so we're going to be replacing what is currently here and adding a new shape and then we're eventually going to add some special effects what I'll do to start off with is I'm going to extend out my work area so that it just covers more of the space since we'll want to make our animation a little bit longer. So let's just extend this out to maybe five seconds or so. I also am going to prevent the circle from animating past this particular point. So once it hits from the second time, we're going to want to just eliminate the shape from being visible. Currently the shape is going to be visible for the rest of the duration of our timeline. And if we select any of the layers and click keyboard shortcut of U, it's going to open up any of the properties that we've added animation to. So that's a really helpful shortcut. We can use it as a toggle. If we click U again, it will hide. And if we click U one more time, it will show. This is helpful if you ever want to just see where your keyframes are. In addition to that, another really helpful keyboard shortcut are to use J and K. So if we use J, it's going to move the playback head to the previous keyframe. And if we use K, it's going to advance to any keyframes that appear further in the timeline. So these are good keyboard shortcuts for you to be aware of. You'll probably use those quite a bit. I'm going to use K to get to the last keyframe that we've created. And as I mentioned before, we're going to want to prevent the circle from showing at this point in time. We have a couple of different ways that we can do this. One of the ways is to zoom out and then we can grab the end of this particular element. If I grab the end of the element and drag this in, I can have it stop at a certain area. So now if I extend past this particular point, you'll see that the circle disappears. So that is helpful. I'm going to do undo a couple of times to get back to what I had before. And the thing that I want to point out is when you do this, every once in a while you can just have some weird behavior. So another way that we can create the same sort of effect is to park the playback head at the position in which we want to end a specific layer. And if we use shift command or control D, that's going to split the layer into two separate layers. So as you can see now, I have two circle layers. The upper circle layer, circle two, is just the static circle. And the original circle layer is the animation that we have of the, the ball bouncing. So I don't really need circle two. I'm just going to simply select this and hit delete. So that might be an easier way for you just to trim a specific layer to a certain point in time. As I mentioned before, we want to create the animation of the ball coming back up and rising, and then it's going to come down. And when it reaches its height, we're going to change it into a different shape. And before I do this, I'm actually going to select all of the keyframes, making sure my whole layer is selected. And we're just going to move everything over to the right. So we're just going to kind of place this a little bit more in the center of our composition window. This is going to ensure that the bounce is going to be more, more centered in the middle. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new shape. I'll click U to open up the circle properties. I'm then going to use my keyboard shortcut of K to advance to the last keyframe so that my playback head is at the appropriate location and we're going to create a new shape. We can access the shape tool by using our keyboard shortcut of Q. This will allow us to access the shape tool and if we go ahead and continue to click Q, you'll notice that the shapes are going to move through all of the various shapes. So here's my rounded rectangle, here we have the circle, the polygon, the star, and then it'll go back to the square. So that's just a quick way that you can cycle through any of the shapes that are available. But for our purposes here, we want to create a square. 
Before I do that, I'm just going to lock my circle layer to make sure I don't accidentally do anything on that layer and we'll double click on the square tool, which is going to create a square for us on our composition. By default, the shape is going to fill the composition size. So I will go into the layer that is called shape one. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up the contents rectangle one. And here on our rectangle path, I'll open that up. I'm going to uncheck the constrained proportions and then I'll option click and that's going to convert the rectangle to a perfect square. Constrained proportions is now back on and I'll simply resize this down to roughly the size of my circle. So I'm just gonna type in 250, making the square much smaller. And because I zoomed out, I'm going to now zoom in. Remember, you can change the zoom or magnification view by coming to this window right here. And I do also wanna mention if you have a mouse with a scroll wheel, you can use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out. So that can be a handy way to change your zoom on the fly. Now that we have our square on the screen and it's roughly the same size, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ensure that it's the same size as the circle. So I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut of J to back up one keyframe so that I can see my circle. And remember our circle is, it's at its position and then it basically just kind of smashes itself down. We're not seeing that last keyframe because if we zoom in on our timeline, you'll see that the keyframe actually occurs after the layer was split. So if I stretch this out, we have to unlock the layer to modify it. But if I stretch this out by one frame and we advance by clicking K, we'll now see the squished circle. So it also is worth mentioning that the keyframe that you see actually is extended out one frame. And for our purposes, it doesn't really matter that much, but we'll go ahead and extend this out so that we can match so that it's the correct size. I'm going to lock my circle layer one more time just so I don't accidentally move that. And let's just collapse that layer so that we have a little bit more real estate. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the square and we're just going to shift, click, hold and drag down. And in order for me to see the underlying shape, I'm going to come to the transform area of the, the new layer. And I'm going to go ahead and twirl this open. And we're gonna just adjust our opacity temporarily. So I'll just bring this down so that we can see through and see the underlying shape. What we're gonna do now is we're going to make the square look a little bit more like a circle. And in order to do that, we're going to add a new property to the square. If you go to the contents area of any layer, you're gonna have this little add option. And depending on the type of shape, if you click the little triangle to the right, it's gonna give you other things that you can add, other properties essentially. So for our square, we can add rounded corners. I'll do that now. And now that I have rounded corners, you're gonna see I have a new property. And just like our other properties, we can twirl this open and we can access the properties. So if I increase this value, you're gonna see that my square is gonna turn into a rounded corner square. And we can continue to do this and look what happens to our square. It actually converts into a perfect circle if we really pump up the radius. I will use that. And now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and with the shape layer selected, I'm going to hit my S property to open up scaling. And we wanna unproportionately scale this object. So I'm gonna uncheck that. And now I can either access any of these properties and change them. And I'll just kind of click, hold and drag. And what I'm trying to do here is get this square that looks like a circle to, to match up precisely with the circle. So that looks pretty good. And now that I have that, I'm ready to start my animation. What we're gonna do is, let's first of all name this layer. I'm gonna select this layer. I'll hit return or enter. 
and we'll just call this square. On our square layer, we want to start the animation here. So we kind of want to do the opposite of what we did on the circle. We don't want the square to show for this initial segment of time. And then we want it to show starting at about two seconds, or I think it's about 220. So once again, with the square layer selected and my playback head at the location that I want to split this layer, I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut of Command or Control Shift plus D to split the layer. And then we'll simply get rid of square and keep square two. And I'll just change the name of square two so that it is just called square. If we go ahead and just scrub through our timeline, here's our ball, it drops. And now it kind of looks like a ball again, but it's the more dimmed version, which is essentially our square. So now that I have that, I'm going to extend my playback head out and let's zoom in so we can kind of see what's happening here. At 220 is when the, the square, if you will, is going to initially show up. We'll move our playback head to about 310 and we're gonna change the position of the square. So with the square layer selected, I'm going to hit P to open position and we actually need a keyframe at the beginning so I'll move my playback head back to the beginning instance of the square with the position property. I'm going to create a keyframe. Then I'll move my playback head to about 310 and let's get a bead on how high our circle goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock my circle layer and on the circle layer, let's use the keyboard shortcut of U, which is going to show any properties that have animation and we can actually probably just kind of copy some of these properties. Let's go back to this property. This is where the, the circle is at its mid height. So this is, it came in and bounced once and this is when it came back up. I'm just gonna go ahead and select this keyframe and copy it. We'll come back to our square layer. Let's move our playback head to 310. And I'm going to go ahead and hit paste which is gonna paste this in. So it just pasted the position property. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to wanna to do the scaling too. So let's just grab that and, and copy it as well. So I'm gonna select that scaling keyframe and copy it. The playback head on square is already where I need it to be. I'm gonna hit Command or Control V to paste that in. And now on the square layer, if we hit U twice, it's gonna open both position and scaling. And you can see that this is scaled out and what I probably did was lost my scaling initially. So actually, let me just do undo real quick. Let's move our playback head back to the initial place. We'll turn on keyframing for scaling. Then we'll move back to 310. I'm using my keyboard shortcut of K since I already have a keyframe there. And now I'll hit command or control V to paste that in. And we're gonna add a couple of other properties here as well. So in addition to tweening, position and scaling, we also are going to tween the corner radius of the square. So I'm going to just collapse square and open it. We'll open contents and here's our rounded corners. We'll open that up. We're gonna turn on keyframing and let's just turn this on. We'll use our keyboard shortcut of J to move back to the initial keyframe and I'm just gonna click this little diamond that will add a keyframe. And now we can move forward again by clicking K and we're just going to reduce the radius down. We're not gonna reduce it down all the way, but maybe about halfway. So it's still a little rounded, but it's kind of a bit of a square. And if we play this now, you're gonna notice that as the, the object bounces up, it kind of scales or scales and moves and transitions from a circle into a square. We're actually creating an animation of a transform or a morph. And just to make this a little bit more visually interesting, let's add some rotation as well. So I'm going to turn on keyframing for rotation. We'll move our playback head back by clicking J and we'll tick the add keyframe and then I'm going to hit K to move forward in time and let's just rotate this maybe 90 degrees so we'll just have a little bit of rotation and if we watch now 
in play, you can see that it just kind of rotates as it rises up, which I kind of like. I think that's looking pretty good. Now I'll move my playback head out to, let's just say four seconds. And at four seconds, we're gonna have this drop down. Now we already have keyframes at that position because we had animated our original circle. So let's select these ending keyframes. We'll come back to four seconds, make sure the square layer is selected and use Commander Control V to paste those in. Because we had used a bunch of scaling on the circle, those changes are being applied. And because we had also keyframed rotation earlier, the scaling instead of being horizontal is now more vertical. So we're gonna have to make some adjustments. Before we do that, let's add a keyframe for rotation. So I'm just gonna change the rotation to 180 and that actually is gonna kind of fix that. And then let's add the corner radius of zero, which will make this a square. And then for my scaling, I'm just going to make this a perfect square by changing the scale attributes so that they match, so that they're both 100. And I'm just gonna have to move this up slightly so it is on our screen. And if we just rewind and play this area, you'll see that the ball bounces and then it comes back up and it is going to be a rounded rectangle and it's gonna rotate and then hit down and be a square. That's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and let's just extend our work area out to maybe five seconds. And I'm going to go into opacity. I never keyframed this, so I'm just gonna bring this all the way up to 100. And if we play all the way through, I'm gonna click my home key to go back to the beginning. That's a keyboard shortcut to get back to the beginning. We'll hit space bar to play. The ball bounces in and then it's going to transform into our square and you can see it looks pretty seamless it really does look like it's transforming into that new shape so that is working pretty great at this point in time and we have used a lot of different properties that we've been keyframing you can see that the method of creating these sorts of animation is very similar you just pick the property you want you set the initial keyframe, you move your playback head out in time, you make a modification to that property, and then an additional keyframe is made. And After Effects is going to create the tween, the in-between frames for us, which is awesome.